How's it going, guys? Texas HD here bringing you episode 22 of my HL14 Hawk Elder Team Road to Glory series. As you guys can see, I just added Mason Raymond to the fourth line there. I put a right wing card on him. So now I have Mason Raymond, Andrew Cogliano, Darren Helm, my whole fourth line. All three players of 89 skating. So this is going to be a very fast uh, fourth line. Definitely going to be using them on the penalty kill. Three man penalty kill, trying to catch the team on a bad pass and, you know, get those breakaways. Also, guys, right here, I just opened up a couple bronze packs uh, just for the purpose of making, a, you know, a few pucks here. Obviously, like I said, guys, bronze pack, your best surefire way uh, to make some pucks. You're probably never going to make a uh, huge amount of pucks, but you're definitely going to make, you know, at least double your pucks. And here, guys, a quick look at the trade pile after that pack opening in the last episode. So, uh, nothing crazy in this trade pile, but if we sell, sell everything, we might be close to 400k. And as you guys can see, uh, coming back here, we did sell a good amount of stuff. We're now at 391k. Uh, a lot of gold contracts there, as I have a bunch from the free packs that I can't sell, so I usually just keep those, and the ones I get in the packs I sell for a little bit of pucks to make, you know, a little bit of the pucks back that I spent on the packs right there. I sold a few bronze players. Gallagher, uh, a training card, I think it's a Winnipeg change team card, and Trevor Daly I also sold. So, got some stuff sold there. Uh, McDonald and Allen. Uh, a couple more bronze players. A duration 3 there for 500 and a Horkop for 850. So, good amount of uh, stuff sold there. And here, guys, we're going to the first game of the episode. And uh, looking for that win after, I think we stayed in the same division last episode, or two episodes ago. Last episode was the pack opening. So, we're going to try to get promoted this time. And obviously, we're going to be, be uh, good to start off with a win here. And as you can see, we go down early 1-0. Well, there you hear David Perron's going to snipe that top right corner. Time the game up 1-1, 5 minutes in the second. And then right here, Perron goes for the fancy move. Camelot gets the puck, gives it back to him. Puts in the back of the net there, making it 2-1. So, Perron's got a nice game going here. Unfortunately, though, right here, he's going to wind one up with Hamus. Gets a tip on net and tie the game up 2-2 at the beginning of the third. And then right here, a couple minutes later, we're on a power play. And on his penalty kill here, he's going to get a shorthanded goal with Lupul, making it 3-2. Luckily, though, guys, right there, bad bounce. Uh, for him, at least, Bodker uh, takes that shot, bounces to Camilleri, ties it up, making it 3-3. And then right there, two and a half minutes left in the game, he scores a goal, making it 4-3. So, unfortunately, uh, we didn't have enough time to uh, tie the game up once again. And uh, a really close loss there. And, you know, kind of unfortunate we were stick stuck in it all that way. And we didn't even get to overtime. We stayed at one point. But, uh, regardless, it was a close game. And then right here, guys, looking at both Kessler and Pavelski. I ended up going with Pavelski simply because same overall, not quite as good stats, but uh, half the price. And I put a center to left wing card on him. He's going to take uh, Burroughs' spot on the first line left wing. And Burroughs really hasn't been playing well for us, so I think Pavelski going to be a great improvement. Also, guys, right here, I'm picking up Justin Schultz to play with Nick Schultz on the third pair D. I had James Wisniewski, but I always wanted to try out Justin Schultz with Nick Schultz, the whole Schultz-Schultz combo. Uh, both Oilers, so I figured why not, especially since I got Schultz there for 900 pucks. Right there, guys, was a quick look at the forward line and defensive line. Goalies are the same. My goalies are playing pretty well for the most part. And, uh, you know, I'm not really going to change them. I like the way they're playing. And a lot of the other goalies are extremely expensive. And I think that uh, Lindback and Bishop are playing just fine. And I really don't need to dish out that many pucks on a better goalie. And uh, right here, guys, this is just a quick look at the trade pile. Like I said, Burroughs, we got replaced, was Newski. Letting in there is from the Dallas collection we get a couple episodes ago. Uh, I was just trying him out for a couple of games, but he did not play very well, so that's why I decided to sell him after the fact. As you can see, I got 3K for Burroughs, which is pretty good. Uh, 15K for Letting in. So uh, bo both of those guys, I at least made my pucks back on. I think I might have made a couple of pucks on them. Uh, was Newski for 1500 I think I made my pucks back on. I bought him... Uh, earlier in the game, so his price was probably around there when I did buy him. Anyway, guys, right here in the second game, uh, he's going to pass the puck into his own net with Varlamov. I don't even think Yakupov got a stick on that, so unlucky break for him there, making it 1-0, and then right there, uh, I think he got a tip on, tying the game up at 1-1. Then right here, beginning of the second period, Wheeler's going to find Stastny there for the cross crease, making it 2-1 game. And then right here, uh, doing the spinorama skate pack, not exactly sure what happened there, but uh, threw the puck on net with the backhand and uh, made it a 3-1 game. Then right here, Finesse is going to wind one up and uh, clap that into the back of the net there, making it 4-1. Then a couple minutes in here, Shine Kirk's going to find the back of the net there, just skate through their D, making it 5-1. And right here, adding insult to injury, Perron's just skate out front, take a uh, wrist shot there on the slot, making it 6-1. So a big win there, that's what we needed after that uh, first game lost. Almost a 1,000 pucks from that win, so uh, it's a very good game in terms of just winning the game as well as getting some pucks back. Shine Kirk, Stastny, and Fnuff were our three stars of the game, so a uh, good game all in all for sure. And right here, guys, I'm opening up a silver uh, premium pack. It was like a special pack where uh, you get like more silver rare players. So hoping obviously for one of the uh, NHL silver rare players like Colton Orr, somebody who's uh, you know goes for 20, 30k. But unfortunately, uh, we didn't get the greatest of players in here. You guys will see. I think our best player we got was the uh, Darnell Nurse there at 60 overall. But uh, he's not really worth that much. I think we ended up selling him for about 500 pucks. But uh, once we sell everything in this pack, probably 
maybe make about half our pucks back, which is, you know, the good thing about opening bronze and silver packs. You're not, they're not as expensive, and you have a better chance of making the pucks back. And then after that, guys, I actually did the whole entire New Jersey Devils collection. So right here's just a quick look at everyone in the New Jersey Devils collection in case, you know, you guys ever go to build it and you're not exactly sure uh, who's all in it. So uh, like I was saying, guys, right there's just a quick look at it. Um, we, I think the only person really that cost us that much money was Corey Schneider, Martin Brodeur, and I think that's it. Travis Zajac wasn't even that much. I think he was like 5K. He's quite cheap for his overall. And uh, obviously the rest of the guys are just regular golds. Uh, even the two silvers weren't that expensive, I don't think. I think they were both uh, under 5K or maybe just around 5K. So as you can see, I put a bunch of it up in the trade pile. Yager sold immediately. I, I must have underpriced uh, him, but maybe I got a steal on him because I'm pretty sure I sold him just for a little bit more than I bought him for. But anyway, guys, uh, that's just the look at the trade pile. Uh, obviously, we still got some silver stuff in there from that silver pack we bought. And here, guys, coming back, you can see I sold the Brodeur, Clo, Henrique, uh, sold a bunch of the jerseys. Uh, I think I just sell the jerseys for what I buy them for, as you know, it's such a little amount of pucks. The tax is really not going to kill you at the end of the day. And also, like I was saying earlier, I'll end up selling that nurse for 500. Right there, guys, I also sold the Larson for a thousand. Somebody uh, got up to 99 overall after buying them from me, so someone's a big Larson fan, I think. And uh, right here, guys, going to the third game of the episode here, we're playing. Uh, FKDFF, I think his name was. And uh, right here, guys, you're going to take a shot with Couture. Uh, just the top of the slot there, making it 1 nothing. And then right here, a couple minutes left in the third period, or sorry, first period. He's going to put another one in there, making it 2 nothing. So we're down 2 already. Uh, late in the first period, trying to get into the intermission, just down by 2. He puts another one in there, making it 3 nothing. So we got a long way to come back. And as you can see, half through the second period there, Blue's going to put that puck on net, going for the cross crease. His goalie makes a huge glove save, uh, right on the line there, stopping us of. Uh, getting in this back in this game and then right here guys a couple minutes after that uh, Bishop's gonna make a huge stop for us as you can see uh, he goes for the same thing and Bishop just makes a huge glove save uh, right on the ice so keeping us somewhat in here only down by three and then right here guys beginning of the third period a nice little uh, spin move there from Wheeler finds Pavelski he gets on the on his one knee there looking like Stamkos put in that one timer making it 3-1 then right there uh, probably shouldn't have uh, smacked at that puck as it went right to him there making it 4-1 right here though on the breakaway you're gonna pull a little closer making a 4-2 unfortunately only three seconds left in the game not quite enough time to uh, actually uh, you know finish out that comeback so he's got three stars of the game there with Couture, Marlowe and Bomeister. Right here guys coming back after that game you can see a lot of New Jersey Devil guys sold a lot of the just you know regular uh, gold players so I'm assuming someone was probably uh, doing a collection as so much of this sold. The Bart there sold for 6k like I said I think it bumped for around 5k so I probably made about 1k profit on him. And uh, right here guys going to another game this one's against uh, Bushwan or something like that. Some people's names I just have such a hard time uh, you know, knowing how to say. But anyway, guys, he's going to score a goal there halfway through the first period. Kind of a weak goal there from where he took that shot. Wasn't the best of angles. And then right there, he just gets one squeaking through the hot five hole on Limbach, making a 2 nothing game. Then five minutes in the second, he puts another one in on us, making it 3 nothing. So this is not looking good. And uh, right here, I think Wheeler's going to find Stastny. Puts a top right corner there, making it 3-1. Unfortunately, there's not enough time left for us to do that comeback. Seems like uh, every single game I play, I seem to be coming back. And it's just whether or not I can uh, you know, mount the comeback back in time or not as to whether or not I'm going to win so unfortunately those last two games just wasn't enough time for us to uh, make it all the way back and hey guys right here's going to be the last game of this episode and uh, in this game here guys we are going up against uh, Snake Griffin 313 that's a name I can actually uh, read and pronounce and uh, as you guys can see uh, halfway through the first period here's going to get a breakaway just a bad kind of defensive play there letting him have that making it one nothing and then dying seconds of the first period here literally I think it's like three seconds left he takes the wrist shot there Scores a goal, making it 2 0. And then five minutes left, uh, five minutes into the second story, Yakupov gets that goal right off the face off there, making it 3 0. So this one's not looking good for us. And then right here, guys, another weak goal. That was like the left side of the circle. I think he might have got a tip on there, making it 4 0. And then Vorchek threw a, threw a puck on there, on net there, sorry, making it 5 0. So not a good game for us. Luckily, we were able to score a goal there. 10 seconds left with Pavelski, making it 5 1 to uh, ruin his shadow. And then right there, right after, we get another goal on the breakaway, making it 5 2. So couple goals there in 10 seconds, but uh, unfortunately we did still lose that game 5-2, to two, so a bit of a rough game for us. And that's the end of this episode, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. The next episode actually is going to be another pack coming episode, so hope you guys are uh, ready for that. It's probably going to be out tomorrow. I'm trying to uh, catch up here, like I said. I know I'm behind on this Road to Glory series, but I'm working pretty hard to uh, get these episodes out, get caught up, and uh, we can start doing some fun things with it. Anyway, guys, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned more. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. Have a nice day, guys. Goodbye. It's the kind of beat the goat.